Two very nice pieces. Can you give us a bit of a tour uh, of what you got here? We've got a bit of a variety here. So some um, American glass. Uh, down the front here we've got cosmic glass from Alaska. Uh, hand blown by a glass artist. Done very well. We've also got some uh, Liberty slides by the side here, as well as some Tripper glass cone pieces too. Uh, made in Wisconsin, the Tripper one as well. Are they? And all these items have been imported through? Yeah, yeah. So these have been imported direct from America. Okay. Uh, we've got some Pyrology Cross ES Norris collaboration. Uh, tech glass. Fine artwork indeed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is just a small selection of what we've got up on the website. We've got some uh, highly educated uh, card caps and nails too, as well. They're a uh, very renowned brand around the world. Yeah, quite a collection. Yeah, and um, building too. Uh, we're always getting more and more. And what would you say people have been most interested in? Uh, they're very keen on the gold drawing papers. Hmm. Um, had a fair bit of interest in those. Cool. Uh, as well as the 420 science jar. Um, they're a very popular item in uh, the USA. That's right. They are uh, uh, nice and fresh. I like them a lot. Yeah, and as well as that, we've got some uh, stickers here from uh, Art of Trog, who did a line of Osborne stickers for us. Thanks. As well as Blaze Australia. I'm very impressed, brother. We're here with Steve Bolt, solicitor. He's going to educate the public on law and where it stands medicinally. So, for patients and caregivers, where does the law sit if you had a half a dozen plants and it's strictly for medical use, grown at your home for your own personal common situation? The answer is it is not legal to do that. You'd be committing an offence of cultivation of a prohibited plant. When it goes to court, you might say yes to the court, I'm guilty of that, but the reason I grew those plants was because, and depending on the evidence about the medicinal need, etc., etc., uh, then the court would be likely to be lenient. So it's legal. In many cases, there's some leniency. Uh, but many, many people come to court claiming a, a medical reason for the, why they smoke cannabis. Yep. Uh, uh, it's probably fair to say the courts hear a lot about medical cannabis. Uh, depending on the type of case and depending on how serious the charge is, you need more evidence perhaps in the court cases to, uh, to be dealt with many of them. Right. But importantly, it does not make it lawful. That is, you are guilty of the offence. So right or wrong in terms of the moral side of things, of course it should be legal, it is not the legal thing to do. Uh, grow cannabis. One exception is an ex uh, exception for uh, under something called the terminally ill cannabis scheme. Okay. So as the name suggests, if you are terminally ill in New South Wales, so if you go to the doctor, so you've got likely life expectancy of about six months, I think, and not quite sure the details. There's extenuating circumstances. Then you register that information with the police and you're in, uh, entitled to not be charged. It doesn't make it strictly speaking legal, but the police protocol is they won't charge you. Um, with possession offences and uh, collaboration offences. You're allowed to nominate the care and sort of detail about how the scheme works. It's very, very limited. You have to be a tech school. So most people are not in the People on their last days of life. Now, if it was emphasised that it was strictly medicinal, would there be any mitigation in the charge? No. Often though the prosecutor says nothing to the court to challenge the assertion that it's medicinal. Mm -hmm. uh, the trouble with the law is every case is dealt with one at a time and uh, generalising. Uh, so for patients, their livelihood is still at jeopardy when it comes down to healing themselves? Very much, very much. There's been government government announcement about change to the law that has not turned into change to the law. New South Wales has taken a very long way around, running some trials. Maybe they'll change the law. Maybe next year they might make some movement with the law that hasn't changed, despite some announcements from government about their intentions and the trials they're running. Victoria has announced it's about to change and that will be in fairly soon, very limited scale of the same. We're still living in unsettling times Indeed. when Indeed. it comes down to it. Indeed. In New South Wales, where we are, that's a state law in New South Wales. Nothing has changed other than government announcements. The law itself is still the law. So people are still liable to be arrested, liable to be charged. 
difficult to comment about policing in general senses, but uh, I think it's fair to say that where the police are aware, come across a situation of someone in a, if I can use the expression, genuine medical case, yeah. then they would be unlikely to come back and speak to that one. Well, that's very sad news. It's, uh, you know, we're really unfortunate that people that are trying to heal themselves are put in a situation where the law is working against them and the healthcare system isn't nurturing the people that really need it. But um, that news has to be brought to the public. Sad but true. Thank you for educating people and uh, informing people of their legal rights. You're welcome. We're here Thank with you David much. and Tom from the Greens Party. They're here to tell us about the progress that's been made in the past 12 months regarding the Smith-Off campaign and some of their initiatives that have been currently implemented. So can you tell us what's been achieved in the past 12 months and how far have you progressed as a movement? Yeah, um, well, over the last 12 months we've really grown. The Facebook page has grown um, to about 18,000 people. So, from, Excellent. Yeah, more than doubled in the last year. Um, that's due to a couple of uh, media stories. Often the media is bashing us, uh, trying to uh, sort of have a go at our, our um, campaign, but it just gets us more publicity, more exposure. People know the service we offer. And, I understand there's an application that alerts commuters when sniffer dogs are in the area. Uh, that would have prevented a lot of arrests. Can you tell yes. us a bit about how that came about and how that's working? It's just a Facebook page at this mm -hmm. stage. Um, we started to do it because people um, were showing us where the dogs were and we didn't really um, envisage that that would be the way it, it, the campaign went, but um, a lot of people were requesting it. Well, when it... Um, we were first sort of workshopping it in the office trying to work out what we do. We thought about doing an app, um, you know, the download lab. We thought it was just going to be focused on where the dogs were. We, we, we rejected that for a couple of reasons. One was the technology tends to move on, and while we might have something that's useful um, in 2014, by the time we get to 2016 or 2018, it might be uh, well and truly obsolete. We also thought that if we did it through Facebook, we would actually create a bit of a community, create a mm -hmm. discussion, a place yep. for discussion. And I've got to say, I think it's worked. It's worked on both fronts. So people get to post where the dogs are. Yep. Um, uh, normally, we, we, the post would only go up if we verified it. Tend to like a photograph to confirm mm -hmm. that the dogs are there. Um, uh, so then people have the information about where the dogs are, they can make their decision about whether or not they want to have their human rights infringed by going past yeah. them or not. Yeah, um, but it also creates a good space, you know, a growing space for a discussion so, about yeah, cannabis yeah, law reform, absolutely. the stupidity of the way we police yeah. And cannabis. people are entitled to know where law enforcement is policing their laws yeah. and uh, they should feel free to travel. Well, the police aren't hiding their light under a bushel, are they? They turn up in uniform in a public place and carry on like pork chops, and we just tell people that. Yeah, very, very good to know. Yeah. And uh, where can you see the campaign heading uh, in the future? What uh, objectives have you got currently set in place, and uh, what goals are you moving towards? Well, Jenny Leon, who's another Greens MP, she's got a, a bill before New South Wales Parliament yep. to um, scrap the Sniffer Dogs program. Right. Um, so stop using them at music festivals, stop using them at bars and uh, on public transport. If you want to use them, get a warrant because yep. you've got specific intelligence. That's right. Um, and so, yeah, that's probably the next big thing happening. I'm not sure whether the That'll main be a, parties are going yeah, to be a huge victory. When well, look, I, I think we've got to be realistic about yep. it. Um, the way the New South Wales Parliament is made up at the moment, we've got guaranteed five votes in the upper house, that's where I sit, mm -hmm, right. uh, five votes for, so that means we've got 30, 36 votes against mm -hmm. in the New South Wales upper house. I mean, we might swim the, swing the animal justice party. Um, that's one more vote. Uh, downstairs, we've got to guarantee three votes for it. You know, right. three out of 96, yeah, we've got sure. the three Greens MPs to all mm -hmm. vote for it. We might swing the independent Alex Greenwich. Mm -hmm. We may get another independent like Greg Piper. Um, but you know, we're talking, you know, at best five votes downstairs and five or six votes upstairs in a parliament that's got, you know, over 130 MPs in it. And we're not going to win it on the floor of parliament. Right? The purpose of putting the bill up, having the Zoom off page, building the campaign, is to actually build the campaign to legitimise drug dogs. Mm -hmm. And we're also delegitimising the way they oh, do their yeah, rankings actually, I'm drug side testing it. Uh, for yeah. cannabis and amphetamines and MDMA. Build the yeah, campaign. No <laughs> so if not this parliament, well then next parliament will knock it off. That sounds very positive and uh, you know, that's very wise for uh, people to have that 
medium so they know where law enforcement is and they know how to go about their rights and yeah. they can make their decisions in an informed manner. Yeah, I think um, the work that the Young Greens do, the work that Tom does, I mean, it's a collaboration between my office and the Young Greens in the New South Wales Greens. And I think ensuring that it's a genuine collaboration that's not controlled by an MP, yeah. supported by but not controlled by an MP, has been an important part of it. Like, you won't see my voice stamped all over the Facebook page. Uh, you will likely see Tom's voice. Yeah. Um, I, I do a lot of the day-to-day -day running and okay. a lot of our, um, our volunteers, yeah, they're Young Greens who are uh, keen on getting drug law reform through, especially mm -hmm. on these uh, drug detection laws, which yeah. is the worst aspect of it. It's diabolical. Yeah, and so um, it's good. I think the community has a bit more buying in when they see that they can be involved mm -hmm. and get involved in the campaign as sort of a top-down sort of thing. And it's really good that David's um, uh, had the um, uh, bravery to actually let go of some of his budget and uh, yeah. resources and let other people take the reins because uh, MPs are not necessarily always willing to do that. It's a courageous yeah. endeavour. It, uh, yeah. You know, it's the right thing to do to educate people about their rights and uh, their freedoms. And, you know, everyone should be able to <laughs> commute safely without worrying about their rights being encroached. Uh, yeah, good to have the discussion up here at Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is always the place to talk. Yeah. You get, I think, a fresh sense of energy before uh, doing some sensible drug law reform on cannabis. We've got a pretty simple message in New South Wales. Legalise it, regulate it, tax it, and everyone will be happy. Excellent. Well, that's uh, been wonderful talking. Uh, I'm sure you've highlighted the campaign very well, and uh, I hope you get continued exposure within your area. Cheers. Best of luck for the future.